Greetings everyone. Today we want to look at the derivation of first rule. And from our previous discussion, we know that f is equal to how c minus p plus 2. And we know that f is a degree of freedom, the c is a component, p is a face. And 2 basically stands for temperature and pressure, which are always there in any uh, system that is in equilibrium. So the degree of freedom or the number of degree of freedom is the difference between the total number of variables minus the total number of non-variables. Non and so this basically is what gives us the degree of freedom. So we need to consider one heterogeneous system and this heterogeneous system is in equilibrium so consider a heterogeneous system that is in equilibrium that has c components in which p faces are present Okay, and so since we know that the system will definitely depend on temperature and pressure, and there are three variables that basically determine the system of temperature, pressure, and concentration, but we know that these ones do exist. Temperature and pressure exist. They're always there. The concentration variable, however, depend upon the number row faces so the concentration variable depends upon the number of faces so in order to define the composition of each face it is necessary to specify the concentration of at least c minus one component constituents of each face oh each each phase so we need to define at least c minus one constituents of of each phase the concentration of the remaining component uh, can then be determined by the difference and we want to see a few examples here how we can find concentration in some of the phases if a system has C components, an example is a water system. So in the water system, we see that we have C being equal to one. And so C minus one will be equal to zero. And so we say that this system here is independent of concentration it is independent of concentration okay if we look at a silver lead system lead system the component is 2 the c minus 1 will give us a value of 1 so at least Composition of one component is used here by determining its concentration. So we can be able to use at least the composition of one component, component either silver or lead. Let's look at a system that has water. Toluene and acetic acid. 
we see that there are three components and so c minus one would be three minus one and that will be give us two so at least we have we can define the system using at least two of this the concentration of at least two of this okay so what we are there, therefore basically saying for p faces for p faces the total number of concentration variables the total number of concentration variables will be the product of p multiplied by c minus one plus two and we say the two basically stands for the the variables that are always there in the system and that is for temperature and pressure okay so this is what we have and this gives us the total number of variables for the system so that is what we have for the variable but remember we said it is for both variables and non variables so how do we get non variables non non variables and this we look at a case where we have p phases and for each component in p phases we'll require p minus 1 equation or the non variables so for each component for each component in p faces will require p minus 1 equations or non variables and therefore for c components it will be equal to c times this total number of variables which is c into p minus 1 equations or non variables okay so so in general when p faces are present p minus 1 equations are available for each component we've already seen that and so for the c component the total number of the total number of equations or variables like we have said are c into p minus one because we know that this number of equation is equal to the number of variables and so we can therefore now define the total number of variables or the degrees of freedom which we say that the degree of freedom is equal to total number of variables minus total number of non variables and so we have p 
into c minus 1 plus 2 what we got for the number of variables minus c into p minus 1 So this is how we combine the two equations. Okay, so when we open it up, then it will give us F will be equal to PC minus P plus two minus PC plus C and so that will go with it and so if we bring the C first then F will be equal to C minus P plus 2 and so this is how we determine the degree of freedom and once we have this then we can calculate for various types of systems we can have a one component system that has one face that has two faces or we can even deal with one that has three faces and so this is how we derive the equation for the first rule which is all about the degrees of freedom. Thank you.